So we didn't actually have any handlings getting the barley combined. That could quite possibly be because it wasn't me driving the combine. I have a problem with one of my eyes at the minute, which is a little bit scary and just can't see too well. The straw and barley coming in through the header, I wasn't able to see it well enough. The flow coming in, if there was any lumps or hitting a bit of soil or whatever, I wasn't fit to see. So Big Bud, he came down and uh, very good of him to take over the combining duties. Combining is one of them jobs that and the crop standing and the sun shining, it's, a, it's an enjoyable job to be at. I find it quite relaxing. When your barley's lying down, or it's wet, or the field's rough, or there's stones, you're constantly looking out, it is a bit of a nightmare. So I kind of missed. I had basically a couple of run around the combine was all I got to do this year. Uh, Big Bud done the rest. It was a bit frustrating. Like I can say it's one of them jobs I do enjoy doing. But just with my eye at the minute, it wasn't very practical. And you can't see, even that cab, uh, you can't sit. On a good day, you cannot sit in that cab. It's a hit sweat box without the door or the windows open. The dust in there gets on real. I need a dust mask on, Paul had the, the mask on. It still wasn't going to be a pleasant scenario. That's nearly the worst thing for driver comfort. Your older machines, you ain't getting much luxury. But you're on it one day a year, it's no big odds. But with the weather being so up and down, and it's just been a dry spot here, you're nearly ready to start combining, the rain comes in. It's just been a bit of a nightmare. But we were lucky enough, uh, came into a real scorcher of a day. Paul was about to knock away at the, at the barley and it ended up coming off at 14 to 15%. So like the stuff here, it's not gonna need uh, dried, it's dry enough which we don't often get that. I think I had one year, I didn't have to dry every other year. We've combined up to was it like 23%, 24% was a, basically the combine could just about get the stuff cut, any damp it wouldn't have worked, wouldn't have operated. But it's a big saving, when you have to put it through the dryer. Different boys will tell you different things. The mills are buying, at grain off you to say they need to be 14% moisture. Barley will keep, I've kept barley up to 17% uh, with no treatment and it has kept. I say on that, if I had 100 ton piled up at 17%, I'd be a little bit nervous whether or not that would keep. But if anything's for a, up to 16%, in my experience anyway, it keeps, keeps fine in the shed. I think all machinery work is relative to what particular farm setup you're on, like everybody's different. I have a neighbour who has 10 acres of winter wheat to cut, which I have to try and squeeze him in somewhere. It was stressing me out because I hadn't my own done. Now that my own barley's all in, you know, the pressure's off me so I'm not as, as bad. Hopefully get a dry day somewhere and get him squeezed in and get his red up for him. Like, I was very grateful for Big Bud coming down to pull me out to drive the combine when my eyesight was messing about. It's just funny, with him coming down and because like, he's the machinery head and stuff on him, I have sort of wondered, have I used him as a crutch? that because he can do it, I maybe haven't learned to do certain things. The other hand, I think maybe if he hadn't, hadn't been about, would my setup be different that I wouldn't have went down like the Machinery Avenue? Because if I hadn't had him to rely on, me and my dad aren't mechanically minded, like we're more into the stock. And, you know, if, if Big Bud turned around tomorrow and says, I'm never coming back about the place, the machinery aspect, likes of the combine, it would change the dynamic on it, whether I would keep at it myself or get the contractor in. Having his, having his hands to be fit to the working machines, even to pull out as a driver whenever you need it in the silage time and stuff. You know, if he wasn't there, it does change the way my farm would have to operate. At the end of the day, the farm's not his responsibility, so I'm sure he loves it every time I ring him saying, well, this is broke, or that's broke, or can you come help me do this, that, or the other? The likes of that out in the combine, the way this season went, really, I would have struggled to get uh, another combine man around here 
to get my red up. I would have got one at some stage, but by that stage, who knows what way, what barley would have actually been left uh, on the stocks, or how much of it would have been still standing. The 1540, we got her, so we have done a lot of bits and pieces to her, and have her going rightly. One of the best things I think we'd done on that combine was buy the big wheels. And at the time, I don't think we'd have was too happy at the price of them big flotation tyres, but it's unreal the difference that makes. The ground has been right and dry this year. That particular field, the majority of it is a real dry field. You have a couple of them wet spots, and simply if you hunt them big wheels on, you hit some of them spots, you'd have been stuck. The combine, she's only two-wheel drive, doesn't help either. With them big wheels on, you do notice a big difference. You can go into sticky spots. I would love to get a set of bigger tyres for the back of her. I have seen years in wet conditions that your car and your front wheels aren't leaving a mark, but then your back wee wheels, they are leaving tracks. And when you do go to bail, that can cause problems. The 12 foot head, it's all right saying, like, you know, combines now 30, 40 foot heads. The wee fields we have over here, a lot of times, that just would be a pain rather than a, than a help to you. It is a matter, if the, everything's going right and the crop's standing, it is just a matter of tramping on. Slowly but surely, you'll get a lot of work done. The field was relatively flat this year, so the combine wasn't having too much bother with anything, there wasn't too many stones. The, especially when you get other boys in with combines, a lot of times they tend to keep the headers up a bit, which is fair enough, because they don't know the ground, don't want to hit stones. I mean, if you're on combine, you can put her down that. If you know your fields, you can put her down that bit lower and get the most straw if you can. That field of straw was very poor in it. There wasn't a big, a big pile. Uh, that's the other thing too. If you have a big header, it's very hard to keep an eye out. You know, over a big distance. If you are worried about a few stones, winter cereals we never roll. Some boys say it'd be better putting the Cambridge roll around and roll them, but normally with the wet one, winters here. I like just to leave it, don't touch it, get it drilled, and that's it, leave as much soakage as possible. Anytime we put spring stuff in, it has been a great job because we've rolled it and you really can. You can lower the combine, the head, right down to the near enough the soil, and you're getting every blade of straw you can off it. Seeing the straw coming off, even just going through the combine, it's just going in the chaff. Uh, it should have been cut probably three weeks beforehand if things that have worked out. There was a tiny spell of weather for two days, but I just wasn't ready to go, and I, I missed it. And then three weeks later, whatever it was, you know, the barley had went down, you'd lost heads, the pigeons had been on it. It just wasn't ideal. A few years ago, I had spring barley in it. She had been in winter barley, I can't even mind what happened. We didn't get her sowed out and put spring barley in the next year. And we got three ton of dried barley to the acre uh, from the spring crop, which I was very happy with for a spring crop, three tons of the acre of dried stuff. I have the field done really well. Going from that down to two ton, allowing for different reasons, maybe between weather and stuff lying down. I maybe didn't get enough artificial or got it sprayed at just the right time. The field probably could do with a coat of lime as well. I think there's a lot of inputs in the growing barley to do it right. If you don't put them inputs in, you're not getting the crop to justify it. But the price of them inputs, you're just nearly break, you're breaking even. Like if, it's a lot of money to spray, put artificial on lime. But then if you lose a ton of yield, like if you lose a ton of yield, well yes, that will help pay for a lot of that. But if you don't have the money sitting there initially, I need to make my mind up in this field what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to put it back into grass. I don't think, I think it needs a break from the barley, so whether or not I put another field in or not, I haven't my mind made up. A wee bit stressed out by it this year. Don't know if I need the hassle of it or not. Maybe for a year I'll give my head piece and not grow any. I do not know because I always change my mind from day to day. So the handlings about this place might be linked to me working on it, but barley's red up anyway. Just have to worry about getting the straw, gather it up, get it in. Doesn't look like there's going to be a big, big pile of straw lying. That'll be the next thing, get the plow yoked on, and hopefully the weather will stay, and we'll get a bit more field work red up. Right